I'm Richard Pither, I'm the CEO of Cytox uh, here in the UK. And the questions that we're focused on at the moment are really all about the the day-to-day -day routine clinical use and, and applicability of genetic risk scores and in particular um, polygenic risk scores uh, for Alzheimer's disease and so we're working with clinics actually uh, around the United States at the moment uh, as well as in larger academic cohort studies uh, to really prove the value of our technology. The earlier that you diagnose the more intact neurons you have to preserve in the brain and the, and the longer the period for clinical intervention. So we're actually today focusing all around Alzheimer risk, not diagnosis but prognosis. What might happen in the future? Can we find and stratify those individuals at greatest risk for developing Alzheimer's disease uh, down the line? The product that we are developing and working on now um, actually takes into account about 112,000 different genetic variants which all contribute a little bit of additional or perhaps a little bit of reduced risk and the, the, the classic example here is a, is, is a gene called APOE. If you carry the E4 variant of, of, uh, of, of APOE then you're at increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. doesn't mean you will get it, it's not diagnostic, but it does put you into a slightly different risk category. Whereas if you carry the E2 variant, then you're, con you're actually considered to be at a little bit lower risk than average. Uh, and APOE is just one of many genes uh, for which those variants exist, which all contribute to the overall risk profile. One is that you know, if you're validating a new test, you want to validate it against a gold standard. Uh, and the gold standard for Alzheimer's disease, unfortunately, is post-mortem histopathology. And so obviously that, that does present problems. Now we've, we've worked with collaborators to access samples uh, from, from such individuals. And so we've, we've been able to assess the, uh, the performance of our test in, in, in that sort of gold standard setting, but that's not an easy thing to do. The other piece that's challenging is that the majority of genetic data, and this is not unique to Alzheimer's disease, has come from Caucasian subjects in Europe and in the United States predominantly. Some of that is historic and some of it is um, societal and we are working of course to access samples from other non-Caucasian ethnic groups and, and again we've got some very good collaborations going on. I can think of a couple at the moment, one in Japan. Um, we, we've also accessed samples through the UK Biobank which is allowing us to assess the efficacy and, and the potential utility in, in non-Caucasian uh, ethnic backgrounds of our test. So we have a pivotal relationship with Applied Biosystems Technology today. Uh, that relationship goes back several years actually and we made uh, lots of inquiries and had lots of discussions with them about the most appropriate technology. And, and we alighted upon the array-based technology that was offered, uh, the Axiom Array technology, which is linked obviously to the Gene Titan equipment that will be well known to you. And part of that was an availability, uh, uh, you know, global availability consideration. So this, this technology is established in reference labs around the world, which has allowed us to, to, to work seamlessly in, in research studies in the United States, in Europe, in Australia and other places, which is, has been fantastic. And, and that platform is very reproducible. So we, we know if we run a, a sample in one center on one day, we'll get exactly the same data as the, the same sample in another lab on another day. That's very important to us. The other key consideration was, as I mentioned earlier, this gene called APOE. Now APOE is a, a difficult thing to genotype consistently. It's a very GC rich gene, uh, which means that some technologies are much more suitable to calling APOE genotypes uh, than others. So APOE is, is key. The applied biosystems technology is absolutely well suited to calling APOE on a reliable basis and, and that was another key part of our decision to go on that platform. I think there's a great potential for the use of polygenic risk scores over the next 10 years and to become part of the routine way that we screen for and manage ultimately those individuals, uh, identify those individuals at highest risk for Alzheimer's disease. So getting polygenic risk in the Cytox test in particular, of course, built into those new clinical guidelines, be that in the United States, in Europe, around the world, for me is a, is a, is a burning ambition. So my interests have always been around the, the applied side of science. So not science for science's sake, but science for the sake of applying it 
towards and, and to meet a, a, a key challenge. And I suppose uh, my interest was always really about healthcare challenges and, and, and how we could take the best science and, and turn it into products and services uh, that would, would help people live longer, healthier lives.